my shop guys uh, this is Rob from Woodsley Summercraft here I am in a position where I can't do any wood turning right now because my Laguna lathe has <laughs> my Laguna lathe my Laguna lathe has died essentially the uh, variable frequency drive has died um, we had a power outage a few weeks ago and uh, we had a bunch of issues flooding and all kinds of other things and I'm th assuming we had a spike in the in the hydro at some point maybe when it came back on maybe just before it went out I, I don't know and uh, my lathe I leave plugged in all the time but I do press the e-stop the e-stop is always pressed which is turning the lathe off or so I thought um, even though I'm an electrician I don't check everything um, but now I'm in a position where I have to try to fix my lathe so I have actually taken it apart I was speaking to a fella at Laguna um, we came to the conclusion that the VFD was fried and uh, basically to buy one from Laguna was, is going to cost me a thousand dollars Canadian which is a lot of money. Um, being an electrician I figured well maybe I can do it cheaper maybe I can help you guys out. Um, I've actually got the lathe sitting right here and I've got it all tore apart. So we're actually going to talk about this thing too here. This relay apparently has been letting people down as well. Now it's a 220 volt coil on that relay and it's using two contacts. Two normally open contacts so there's six leads going on that relay two leads energize the relay that would be 110 volts on each of the leads going to the coil and um, then there would be one lead to the commons of each of the contacts and one lead on the normally open of each set of contacts in fact they are numbered I can tell you what the leads are that go to the contacts on the relay on the um, coil, which is the little white thing there, which energizes the relay, there are two wires. Wire number seven and wire number L1. Now on the commons of the contacts are wires number nine and wire number one. And then on the open contacts, we have wire 0 and wire number 6. Now I have the print here and I'm going to put a couple of images up so you can see them. It's a little bit technical for anybody that's not an electrician. It is definitely technical. Down at the bottom it shows you the, the coil on the, on the end and then the two sets of contacts, comma, normally open and normally closed and it shows you there kind of explains you what they are and um, that relay has been causing a lot of grief for a lot of people now I can find a relay I honestly don't know what Laguna is going to charge for a relay if you need one I'm assuming it's not cheap I'm assuming it's going to be in the region of a hundred dollars I could be wrong but the VFD they were trying to sell me was four times the cost that I can purchase one on Amazon. Um, the only difference is I have to set up the parameters. Regardless of whether I buy it from Laguna or from Amazon, I have to disconnect the old one and wire the new one. So you have to have some skill sets to be able to do that. Um, pretty sure I can handle that. Um, I'm going to have to mount it to the back of the lathe, so I may have to drill and tap a couple of holes in the back of the lathe. Now, not everybody is up to that task, um, but there it is. That's what I'm going to have to do. Most likely, the holes that mount the new VFD will not line up with the other VFD. So, yes, if you want to spend $1,000 and get the exact same VFD with the settings in it already, you're going to spend a thousand dollars and it it will make life easier for, for you yes but that's why I'm making this video because my life's about to get difficult because setting up the parameters is not really my thing 
but I do have a friend that does that on a daily basis so I'm going to be contacting him and speaking to him about setting up this VFD because the last thing I want to do is damage the lathe any further um, because at that point well I may as well just call it quits because uh, I don't know if I want to spend a thousand dollars fixing the lathe maybe down the road I, I don't know but there we are there we have it so I'm going to show you the VFD I've already disconnected the L1 and L2 which is the line I've already disconnected motor leads 1, 2 and 3 which are the, for the three phase motor and also the L1, L2 that come up to the control panel I disconnected those as well um, there are some other control wires I have to delve into that and uh, pull the cables out of the VFD and then start working on the new one getting that installed um, so so you know even with the e-stop pressed you still have power at the VFD all of the time and that's what gets you because if you get a spike in your voltage it's going to hit that light, that VFD and you're going to be needing a new one as well so there are ways to get around that one would be to unplug it after each use ideally you should get a line reactor which is essentially a one-to-one -one transformer which will basically protect it will even out the spikes in the voltage that's coming from the uh, from the line from from the power grid um, and protect your VFD now I don't know why they couldn't incorporate that in the lathe because it wouldn't take up a whole lot of space they should have done that Laguna I think you should do that um, and I did mention that to the guy at Laguna but uh, he was a nice enough fella don't get me wrong I'm just uh, currently not wanting to spend a thousand dollars and I figured why not get into it myself and see if I can figure it out with a VFD that I purchased on Amazon for 250 bucks so let's have a look at this. So while I was troubleshooting, I did take all of the, the dashboard apart, I guess, uh, because I've heard a lot of people do have trouble with these relays, uh, but my relay actually looks very good. There's no damage to it at all. So I will end up, put, I will put this all back together again. Now this is a bit of a pain with the screws, they're very small, and there's a couple of little handles here which make it very difficult to get it off and on but uh, I'm going to do that now and then we'll look at the VFD so the VFD is held on right now with four screws one in each corner top and the bottom and this VFD is toast I've got a dead short between L1 and L2 which is the feed coming from the outlet in the wall um, showing it right here This is showing actually commonly used parameters, so that's going to be very helpful. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. We will see. Anyway, looking in here, <laughs> there are basically one, two, three, four, five, six, seven seven wires coming from the control board above and there are the two from the outlet plus the ground and there are three wires going to the motor so M1, M2, M3 go to the motor L1, L2 come from the outlet and they also go up to the control panel I have a drawing I will leave a link to the information in the in the description below and also I will post pictures in the corner of the the image but if you look on here you can see there is terminals one on the ground four let's start at the other end three is on plus 10 volts two is on AVI four is on MO and five is on M1 so that is going to be information that I may need later on. And then L1 and L2 went to the line side. There was no dead short from the control panel or from the receptacle with the cord and the plug, I should say. 
the short was in the VFD so this VFD has to come off you're going to need a terminating screwdriver to remove the control wires you're going to need a Phillips screwdriver to remove the line and the load which is the feed coming in and the motor going out um, the screws you have to take the screws right off on the underside because of these eyelets the eyelets have to go back in and they go under the complete screw so I can take these off of the control terminations that's wire 3 and wire 2 then there's a space then MO is 4 and M1 is 5 and then the ground is 1 so I will take those wires out and these are little ferrules basically they stop the wire from fraying so you get a good clean connection they can come right out is this one going to come out yeah okay so they can come right out and the wires are all disconnected now except for the grounds in the back so I'm going to now disconnect the grounds in the back and then we'll pull the wires right out now in the back there you can see there are a couple of ground wires but there's also the DC brake now if you look at the print right here it shows you uh, B1 and B2 is the DC brake and then it shows the feed coming in which is 240 volts and then the motor leads going out as a four wire which would be L1, L2, L3 and ground so make sure that you don't ground those brake wires they need to go onto B1 and B2 there are two very small screws one way in the back corner of this side one way in the back corner of this side that will release this bottom metal plate hopefully so we can get that right off like that and I'm hoping that we can utilize this for the other VFD although I don't think it's the same but we will see so there's the inside so those are the two screws one in that back corner one in this back corner that hold this bottom plate on um, these two screws here on the right are the brake these two screws are the grounds this is L1 and L2 and this is M1, M2, M3 and then the control wires there was nothing on these ones just on these five terminals one, two, four, five and the last one, the ground and again there's a list of parameters which are commonly used so give you an idea of what you can do UVW is the motor T1, T2, T3 is the motor which is also M1, M2, M3 this shows brake 1 and 2 and the ground on the left showing you exactly where all the wires go so now I can remove the VFD from the back side of the lathe the bottom two screws I just have to loosen and the top two screws I have to take out and then you can lift the VFD out and this is looking at the back side I'm looking through the top just looking to see what I can find there is no cooling fan in there which I thought maybe it would have there is actually a connector for a cooling fan but I guess Laguna did not supply one I wonder why maybe you could check your, your lathe and see if there's a fan on your VFD because those are the cooling fins to keep it from getting too hot but that's during use so there we have it the VFD is out and now the new one can go in we'll bring that over now and take a look at it 
So this is the new VFD. I haven't unpackaged it yet. It is significantly smaller than the old one. But it has the same properties. It came with a manual and an extension cord which I don't think I will need. This would be for the, the HMI, the controller, which is this section here which can come off and you could put it somewhere remotely but uh, I plan on using it the same way with the control board on the on the uh, VFD oh, sorry the control board on the lathe now this one has a cooling fan so I'm wondering did it overheat so these are the capacitors on the left the cooling fins the heat sink it's got a pack of silica so it doesn't get moisture that will come out and it shows here the model number is GK3000 2S0015 G it's a 1.5 kilowatt VFD with an input single phase 220 volts that's two hot wires 50 or 60 Hertz well we have 50 Hertz we have sorry we have 60 Hertz in Canada 50 Hertz in the UK the output is AC three phase 220 volts 0 to 50 Hertz 7.5 amps and the old one has absolutely no information on it there, there it does it does it's right here on the top the old one uh, the model number the old model number was VFD 015 S 21 D input is single phase 200 to 240 volts 50 to 60 Hertz 15.7 amps which is the same the input is the same the output is less um, the output is 2 horsepower and uh, 3 phase 0 to 240 volts 7.5 amps frequency range 1 to 400 Hertz so we only need the zero, the 1 to 400 Hertz so we can change that in the settings 0 to 5 hertz, 500 we need 1 to 400 uh, the output is the same 7.5 amps 7.5 amps and the input here shows 15.7 amps and I believe it's the same on this one too but it would show in the manual so what we can do now is we can unpackage this and get it marked up ready for mounting on the lathe and seeing where we can mount it and if we have to drill holes and have a look inside make sure there's nothing on the inside of the headstock that will get damaged by drilling it so I was looking at the new VFD and I'm looking at the terminations inside and I have L1, 2 and 3 uh, for a single phase you just use L1 and L2 and then UVW is for the motor and E for the ground and then here are the terminations for the controls now this is missing the two brake terminals um, it shows in the manual in section 3, chapter 3 that it should indeed have terminations P plus and PB which is for a braking resistor which the lathe does have and this is for the GK3000 which this VFD is and yet I don't see those terminations on here so that's a little disappointing however I decided in my wisdom and electricalness to take the VFD apart and have a look inside so I took the front cover off of the VFD and I found this now this is our culprit it is a capacitor and it's a 470 microfarad capacitor at 400 volts so it should literally be two wires going to this capacitor now I can almost guarantee that if I replace that capacitor this VFD is probably going to be okay so I'm going to attempt, look online, see if I can find this capacitor, order it, and see if I can get this off of the, uh, the PCB board, which is what it's 
on here and uh, replace it see if that works that might save me a lot of grief or it might just create more grief that's my life let's see so I'm going to leave it here for now and we're going to come back when I've got the capacitor